tech independence is all about the fact that I think the main sales pitch of the cloud is, now don't worry your little head about that. Let us take care of it. We'll keep all of your data. See, isn't that easier now? There, we've got your data. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it actually reminded me of something I think you said in 4-Hour Body about yoga studios. That, no, it's not the best thing for your health, but it's, it's a better profitable pitch for them to sell you a yoga studio instead of the deadlift yeah. free weights. Yeah, there's a lot of that in fitness overall, for yeah. sure. Mm-hmm. So there's an incentive. This is the tech equivalent of that. Mm-hmm. That I wish that history had gone such a way that we all had our own little private server at home. But instead, the cloud made a, made a better sales pitch saying, no, 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 give us all your stuff. We'll take care of it forever. So my idea is if you spend a few hours to learn how to do it yourself, you'll just have tech independence. What that means is self-reliance. It gives you better security, better privacy, better freedom, better flexibility, and total control. And I think it's a great use of your time to spend a few hours learning to do this, kind of like somebody learning to drive manual transmission, right? Mm -hmm. You don't need to do it, but this is a good life skill to have, especially imagine if we were in a world that had more, you know, just 50 years ago. Or now in a lot of countries, you still can't drive automatic. So have you heard, I don't know if you've heard the same stories I have about how many people have lost their Google accounts. There was a guy I know who's a very savvy tech entrepreneur in Singapore who, because he was so tech savvy, he put all of his kids' photos in the cloud since the day his kid was born. He put everything onto Google Photos. For 10 years, his kid was 10 years old the day that he started a new company and said, I'm going to do the Google Apps for Business. And it asked him a quick question. Would you like to merge this with your existing Gmail account? He said, yes. He merged it. And the next day, his wife was like, honey, where are all the photos of our kid? He went, they're in Google Photos. She said, no, they're not. And he looked it up. He's like, oh, my God. I mean, they're gone. And he emailed customer service and they said, well, no, you chose to merge your accounts and we warned you that they're gone. He said, well, could you please recover them? They said, no, they're gone. This poor guy has no photos of his kid from age zero to 10 because he trusted the clown. I mean, sorry, cloud. (laughs) He can't trust those clowns. (laughs) So Sorry, that was some tech snarky. Escape the clowns and the cloud. Escape the clown. (laughs) Tech snark. Okay, so... so Oh, did you do do that on purpose? I did. Oh, that was good. Sorry. (laughs) Yeah, anytime when somebody talks about the cloud, you know, change it to an N. Clown. The cloud. (laughs) Keep keep all my contacts in the clown. (laughs) So everything I'm going to describe here takes just a few hours to set up. This isn't a major, major thing. It's not that hard. Listeners of yours are used to being suggested to learn how to do something. And let me also preface this for a quick second. This is not a tangent by saying, I do not experience you. Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe you have spider holes dug in the backyard. I do not experience you to be a hyper-paranoid person Mm -hmm. at all. So I just want to mention that because folks might think, oh my God, this guy's got like 20 years worth of oatmeal and like, (laughs) you know, gold bars and guns in the basement. And he's this guy, maybe, right? I want to sort of set the proper reference point, which is I don't experience you to be a paranoid person. Not at all. So first, let me just say, the first thing you need is to get your own server, Mm -hmm. which is as simple as $5 a month. If you go to, there's a company I recommend called vulture.com, but it's spelled V- U-L-T-R dot com. <laughs> Could use some branding help, but yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so they have something called Cloud Compute for $5 a month, where basically that's setting up a private slice that's just yours, but on a shared computer. Okay, so it's like a virtual private server. A virtual private server, exactly. Mm-hmm. I was trying to not get technical. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, and a server, for people who don't know, I know this is going to be old news for a lot of folks. What is a server? Sounds super complicated it's and technical. Not, it's just a computer that's always online. Got it. That's it. Okay. Publicly accessible, always online. Doesn't even necessarily need to be public. We'll get to that. Because I think for setting up your server, there are three options. Either the $5 a month, vulture.com, cloud compute. Number two, search the web for... Clown compute. <laughs> for cheap, dedicated server. So now a dedicated server is an actual piece of hardware that is only yours, not shared with anybody else. So if you want more privacy, just spend a little extra money and get a dedicated server. Which means, yeah, this physical hardware, you're the only person that has... They have physical access to it, but you have the only root password, Mm -hmm. and it's going to be an encrypted hard drive. We'll get to that. The third option is go to any used marketplace and find an old used Lenovo ThinkPad, Hmm. ideally from the T400 series. You can get these for under $200 now, and they're great, and they run any old operating system, and you would just set this up in your closet and keep the master version of your server in your closet, and then the other things would be mirrors of that. But Mm -hmm. we'll get to that in a second. 
Okay. So here comes my... You have done some work. Here's my quick how-to. And I'm going to tell you a few things here that aren't complete instructions, but they're enough for you to search the web. So I'll tell you what to do, and you can search the web for exactly how. But the first thing you're going to need to do is to use the terminal. So the command line. In the Mac, it's built in. You go into utilities folder. It's called terminal. On Windows, it's called PowerShell. And anybody using Linux, you know what it is. So (laughs) the operating system I'm going to recommend, the one I use, is called OpenBSD. And we touched on this on the street the other night. The reason I use OpenBSD Isn't it is bondage be- sadomasochism. So <laughs> no, 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 sorry. <laughs> Berkeley software distribution. Oh, there we Actually, go. a quick bit. Of, I was born in Berkeley, California, mm-hmm. and kind of like more people named Dennis go into dentistry because there's an affiliation of names. Freakonomics pointed that out. I always wonder if my affinity with the BSD operating systems is because I was born in Berkeley. Oh, like look at B that. stands for Berkeley. Who knows? You know anyway, what? but the reason I got turned on to <laughs> OpenBSD is because I used to have a Linux server as a public server and it was hacked one mm. day. And the guy at the data center said, oh yeah, that's been happening a lot lately. He said, you might want to switch to BSD. It's a lot more secure. So OpenBSD is designed from the ground up by super security freaks. And part of why it's so secure is it's so simple. It's a very, very simple operating system that doesn't do everything under the sun. It does this that I'm describing and it does it really well. And it's secure as hell. And it's got, as I understand it, a few lines of code. Yes. Right? Which means, let's just say you're a writer. The more you write, the higher the frequency of typos. Yes. And you don't want bugs in your code. That can be exploited. The less code, the better. So install OpenBSD and follow the instructions to encrypt one of the disk partitions in there as you're installing it. Then you're going to use SSH, which stands for secure shell, to log into it. Then on your home computer, use that terminal to generate a private SSH key. You do ssh-keygen, the type you want is ed25519. (laughs) And then that's going to generate two keys, a private key and a public key. You upload the public key to your server, and then after you do that, edit your SSH configuration file to disable password logins. So now the only way to log into your server is with your private public key that you just generated, right? Mm. Very similar to the crypto public-private thing. Mm. Then you go into your pf.conf settings, you edit your firewall to only allow port 22, which is the port that SSH uses to connect. Once you've done that, voila, like now your server is super secure. Nobody can get in except you from your computer with a generated private key through SSH is the only way to connect to that server. Can you explain the generated private key? Yeah, it's really just a single command you type on the terminal. If you type ssh-keygen space dash t space ed25519, will ask you for an optional password, and it just creates the private key and the public key. Same name, but one has the .pub at the end. Mm -hmm. And then you just use whatever tool you want to upload the .pub to your remote server. You put it into the correct place, an authorized keys file. And voila, now it will, instead of asking you for your password, it just uses the private key and the public key matching to let you in. Got it. So it's like Marco, Polo, okay. Yeah. We're in, as opposed to entering a password every time. Right. And that's why then you want to change the SSH server configuration files to disable passwords. So even if a billion script kitties were trying to hack your server to guess your password, passwords are just disabled. Keep track where you are. Yeah. Do you think this will become, and I'm non-technical folks, you've probably guessed, but this type of Marco Polo, (laughs) I can't even remember the proper way, the private keys and so on, private Mm -hmm. public keys or whatever the term is, will become more and more prevalent as Mm say quantum computing and so on allows the current level of encryption to be decrypted more and more effectively. I'm just, I'm just wondering about, well, this is going to take us off on a major I tangent. I think it's what our phones are already doing behind the scenes yeah. with WhatsApp encrypted chats or FaceTime or even just our phones themselves. When you type in that code, when you first turn on your phone, I think our phones are already behind the scenes using public private key. I think. Yeah. So that's yeah. the way it should be. It's to just it is the best solution so far, I think. Yeah, side note, if you have a four-digit password on your phone, you can change that to eight-digit. Nice. Simple, simple upgrade. Know. Yeah, in the settings. <laughs> okay, so next thing you need a domain name. My recommended place to get a domain name is a wonderfully nerdy non-commercial site called bookmyname.com. <laughs> B-O-O-K-M-Y-N-A-M-E.com. Do you, get, you, do, you don't get 10% affiliate. Cost, Absolutely not. <laughs> Wait till you see the site. It's like <laughs> wonderful, old-school, nerdy. Geocities. There's no affiliate program there. <laughs> 
As a backup, <laughs> I use netim.com. Both of these are French companies. Okay. And there's a third one in Portland, Oregon that I like called porkbun.com. Pork bun. Yeah, all three of these are really good <laughs> reputable places to get a domain name. I recommend them. No affiliate fees at all. <laughs> I just like them. I use them. Okay. So now you've got a server. Mm-hmm. And the best thing to start with, like you said, I'm not a guy that's got stockpiles of oatmeal and gold. <laughs> but once you've got, I don't know why you picked oatmeal, but once you've, got, oatmeal. <laughs> once you've got your own server, it puts everything else into perspective. So that's really where I'm coming from when yeah. I say like, I don't do things in the cloud. It's because when companies come out and say, we can take care of this for you. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you've already got in your, your bread and peanut butter and jam in the kitchen. And somebody says, we can make a sandwich for you in your own home. You think, I don't, I don't need your help. I, so for those who heard the scotch really just hit me, I mean, good Lord, that was not very much, but <laughs> <laughs> you'll have extra personality for this episode, folks. So for those people who listen to what you just said, and they're like, I think I just heard a lot of Klingon. I'm not sure, but I can't parse what any of that means. It right. sounds overwhelming. Right. What would you say to them? I care about this so much that I'm going to set up a really dead simple thing that's basically just do this. Copy, paste cool. this. This is going to work. Look at that. So email me. <laughs> God damn it. Email you. Write a blog post, Derek Sarris. I will. No, I will. I will. <laughs> <laughs> blog post? What's that? 